We begin our Sunrise Smart Start in California. At least seven people are dead after a mass shooting in Half Moon Bay, an Oceanside community south of San Francisco. It comes just two days after 11 people were killed and nine more injured outside of Los Angeles in another mass shooting. When officers arrived on the scene in Half Moon Bay, they found four people dead from gunshot wounds. Police then found three more people dead at a second location further south. Authorities say the suspect is a 67-year-old man he did turn himself in. Police have identified him as Zhao Chun-Li, a man who lives in Half Moon Bay. Meanwhile, in Southern California, the community of Monterey Park is reeling from Saturday's mass shooting. Police say 72-year-old Hu Ken Tran attacked a dance studio during a Lunar New Year celebration before turning the gun on himself a few hours later inside that white van. Back to our area now, Seth Larson, the Iran Decoit man charged in the May 2021 death of his girlfriend, Lisa Schuler, has been found guilty of all charges. Larson was on trial and charged with murder in the second degree, tampering with evidence and disposal of a human corpse. According to court documents, on May 25th of 2021, investigators found Schuler's dismembered body outside her and Larson's residence on Culver Road in Iran Decoit. A few days later, more of her remains were found at Durand Lake. Larson was identified as a person of interest and was later caught in West Virginia by U.S. Marshals following a weeks-long search. Prosecutors say they were confident with their case from the start, but add they didn't expect to get a verdict only a couple of hours after jurors began deliberating. We were just talking a, a little surprised that uh, it happened when it did, but certainly grateful that the jury was able to see all of the evidence and come to that conclusion relatively swiftly. Um, I'm just glad the, the family didn't have to have a long drawn out wait for, you know, what's ultimately, you know, one step closer to justice. So sentencing is scheduled for Thursday, March 2nd. Larson faces 25 years to life. Rochester police have identified the 25-year-old shot and killed on East Avenue in Rochester Saturday night as Michael Mathis of Gates. Police say Mathis was involved in an argument that escalated that led to the suspect firing multiple shots. Police also confirmed Mathis is the same man found not guilty in connection to a shooting at the Boys and Girls Club of Rochester back in 2015. Three people were killed in that incident. Police are not sure if these two incidents are connected in any way. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Rochester has announced funeral arrangements for Bishop Emeritus Matthew Clark. He died over the weekend at the age of 85. Evening prayers are expected to begin this upcoming Sunday at 7 p.m. at Sacred Heart Cathedral in Rochester. Public visitation hours are set for Monday at the same place. Those hours are from 10 to 11.30 a.m. The funeral is expected to begin at noon on Monday. Governor Kathy Hochul and local leaders in Rochester addressed lead poisoning in our community and how they're planning to eliminate it. In Rochester, city officials say they've inspected close to 150,000 structures and 219,000 living units, saying many of these places are now lead free. Hochul says in 2005, there were 3,500 cases of lead poisoning in people. In 2021, there were about 530. Hochul called the city of Rochester a shining star when it comes to fixing this problem after the city enacted Rochester lead law, requiring inspections for lead paint hazards. And since that law was enacted, 85% drop in the number of children testing positive for lead poisoning. 85% drop. You know how many more children are now liberated from the shackles that would have been there had they been exposed and all the ill effects I just described? You know how many children will have none of these strikes against them? Because the city government made a decision to do something that was responsible. Hochul also added she plans on using the Rochester model for municipalities all across New York State. All right, let's check in now with meteorologist James Gilbert for a look at today's forecast. James, if folks are heading out the door this morning, what yeah. should they be wearing? Do we need snow boots, rain boots? Yeah, I think probably snow boots would okay, be a good idea good this morning. Watch out, could be a little slick out there. Winter jackets, a good idea. Hat, yeah, some gloves, probably a, a good plan. Maybe warm up the car before you have to head out there. Numbers hanging right around the lower 30s. It's breezy out there. And we do have a few flakes flying this morning, so just a dusting or so on the ground. Then we drop into the 20s tonight that will open the window for some accumulating snow tomorrow. 
We'll break that down with the eight-day forecast at the end of the show. Casey, ML. All right, James, thank you. One check of our traffic report in Sunrise this morning. Things are still looking really good out there. I'm not seeing any accidents. All of our main arteries are running on time, as you can see. As of now, that's going to be 390, 490, and 590. We do have updates for you until 830 this morning, so if anything changes, we will, of course, let you know. Former Gates Town Supervisor Mark Cassini has announced a run for Monroe County Executive with the Republican Party. Assini served as Gates Town Supervisor for eight years and is running against current County Executive Adam Bellow, a Democrat. In his announcement yesterday, Assini talked about his ideas for the future of Monroe County. I will fight in Albany to bring back our fair share of money to help our businesses grow and expand. I'll look at every department in county government to cut waste, to address runaway spending and support our police, to restore dignity to the police profession, to let young men and women know that considering a career in law enforcement is an honorable thing. In a statement, Monroe County Democratic Chairman Stef Stephen DeVay responded to Assini's bid, saying in part, quote, at a time when families are working hard to make ends meet and are tired of the divisiveness affecting, infecting our public discourse, Assini is asking residents to elect a candidate who broke everything our community relies upon the last time he was in county government, end quote. Roberts Wesleyan University is celebrating the grand opening of its brand new Golisano Community Engagement Center. The new space is dedicated to student engagement. It costs close to $14 million to build. The 26,000 square foot center will serve as a space for students to connect with each other as well as with campus resources. It's something the university's president says has been much needed. We are 157 years old and we have never had a dedicated student space. We've had little nooks and crannies that we've created over the years, but this is the first time in our history that we've actually had a student commons. She adds the space will especially be helpful in the winter months as students would typically have to sit in their cars between classes to stay warm. Uh, we've got snow showers a little bit today. Uh, tomorrow I'll put an inch or two on the ground for you and then we go warm. Uh, we may even see some uh, rain showers Wednesday night and then watching more snow showers for Thursday. So we've got flakes flying just about every day in the eight day forecast, believe it or not. Another system slides in by the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. Do see some light snow showers, but uh, let me tell you, you want to stay tuned with our forecast. You'll catch Eric tonight. He'll have uh, some finer details with that. And then by tomorrow morning and Thursday morning, we will be tracking the storm system as it moves through the region. All right, James, thank you. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Have a great day. Our next update's in 30 minutes. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everybody. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.